Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I think you have to admit that uh, I'm recording. Where have you admitted it? I have no idea. Do it again. I, I think I'm recording. I think it's good. I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll see after. Uh, maybe I have it. Yeah. So <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, uh, the first episode, and uh, uh, my idea is uh, uh, I've been uh, I'm trying to make a podcast where I interview uh, different musicians and artists in uh, Oslo and Norway. Absolutely. And you are the first guest. Hello, and thank you Hello. for that privilege or that nightmare, whatever <laughs> way it turns out. Oh. I'm sure it's going to be honest. Yeah, we don't know what, uh, what this is, but uh, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't know. But uh, the funny thing is that uh, no one really knows. So that's okay. Yeah. So uh, if you start with, uh, I, I have a couple of questions for you. And uh, okay, if, okay. You tell, if you can tell everyone uh, what's your name and, uh, and who you are, just like briefly. Nothing. Okay. Well, yeah. Of course, we know each other. So my name's Ian, Ian yeah. Trewella. I'm a saxophone player mainly, but I play right. multiple instruments. But I'm known yeah. in Oslo, or I'm known mostly for saxophone. But I love playing piano and singing and lots of other things. That's the musical background. And uh, I was right. brought to Oslo in mm, 2011. And then yeah. I did my research on the music scene here because it looked quite interesting, you know? And I thought, well, I'm moving over here. I've got to go and check out the scene. And the first thing I did was I hit the jam scene. Right. And it was just, wow. I was so pleasantly surprised at the, the competence and the level of the musicians, not just the professional sounding, but the, the whole attitude was really just chilled out. And that really appealed. Because you go around the world, I mean, I've played around the world, and some places you go, you get this thing us musicians have called ego, because that's why we do it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And some of us, sometimes we have too much of ego, which I've right. been guilty in the past, of course. We all have. We all have, But yeah. when I came, yeah, when I came to Oslo, it was so humble and shoulders down, and I just felt like I'm a fish to water here, you know? It was beautiful. Absolutely nice. beautiful. But uh, when you say you were brought to Oslo in 2011, what, what does that mean? How, how did, is that a personal story? Do you don't want to go into it? Or is it, is it just something you want to talk about? It's a personal story, and I don't mind going into it. I mean, I use the words, I was a sexual refugee because I was brought by a beautiful woman. So, <laughs> I right, mean, right. I'm going to try and keep this as a PC as possible, you know? But um, right, right. that's basically what happened. I was brought by a beautiful person. And of course, like things in life, it didn't work out in the end, but that's okay. It's no ill feelings, all good there, you know? But I decided, right. you know, I'm so ingrained into this society that I'm staying because I have a career here and I enjoy it and I like the people, you know? And it was yeah. difficult at first to adapt because the culture changes right. between being a Brit and to be yeah. here, I felt yeah. like I was in the movie Back to the Future. I felt like I was Marty McFly and I just jumped out my DeLorean and then I'm yeah. stepping, I'm thinking, wow, I feel like I'm 25 years, 30 years in a different time, right. you know? But And yeah. it was in a good way, in a, in a positive way, because it's so open and honest and fresh. But yeah, I mean, once I adapted, once I adapted yeah. to the culture, the way things are, I'm right. absolutely grand. So mm -hmm. it, was it any difficult um, uh, process you had to go through to you know, when it came to Norway, like to be, did you, to be like become a, a part of the community? How, how, how did that work? Well, what I found was at first, because I always found that the culture here was very skeptical in general, you know, and that's okay. I mean, there's, right. there was only something like, few million of people over here you know on this big lump of land and used to having your space and all that then you get these foreign people like myself and other musicians coming into the 
the tiny little music scene here and right. it's like who's this stranger who's this and it's it was kind of a closed shop and yeah. to get in to the, the state where the doors open and then people are welcoming you in and then you're part of it and then they're asking you oh can you do this can you do that it, it right. takes a while and i know many musicians who are not norwegian or let's just say and yeah. They come here and they have these issues but that's fine i mean we all fight to prove our ability and we all have this sense of uh like our sense of worth and how we are and what we can do and it, when that comes across to norwegians i felt it comes across as like an arrogant thing you know it's like oh who's this for an English guy who's a sax player, he's an arrogant guy, he's a big head or whatever. It's not, it's just you're trying to show your worth, you're trying to prove your credibility and who you are to be accepted because that's in our culture, that's how it works. Whereas yeah. here, it's different. And then it was just working that out. And now hmm. it's great. And you are a musician. You, you, you post, uh, you, you are, um, I watch you uh, on Facebook and you're pretty. Yeah, you're one of the, you like you're one of the more like active people on on uh, social media, uh, mm. and you don't and you you have uh, you have like some information videos. Do you want to talk about what that is and what 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 mm. uh, uh, how how is that how is that affecting uh, the situation in the situation? The yeah, like um, yeah. The, how does the, uh, the when you post information videos? How do you feel it uh, it works for you? Does it work? Do you feel like you get your voice through? Like, is it, you know? I think that people do listen. Maybe people can get tired of people ranting, but I, I try not to put ranting videos out. But of course, I'm a yeah. human, so inside I might be ranting and thinking, oh this and oh that. But you collect yourself, you calm yourself down, and you say, okay, let's put this out right. in a logical and rational and like a heartfelt right. way rather than abusive or emotional because you get too many keyboard warriors keyboard ninjas yeah. who yeah. just want to troll online you know and i can't be bothered with that you know i'm i'm not a 15 year old kid with hormones going crazy i'm nearly 50 right. year old guy 50 year old kid with hormones going crazy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i try to i try to keep them pulled in because at the end of the day we're all we all young in here, you know, until we're in yeah. a box. That's what I think, you know. So I try right. to keep that in check and just put things out in that information yeah. videos. Yeah. Not to try and say, hey, I'm better than you or hey, you're better than them. Or it's more about people to be aware of that there's just more than one side of stories, let's just say. And right. for people to have a bit of more of an awakening in their own minds to use their own minds because it's such a powerful tool mm. so that they can find out information for themselves which we all have our what i call our blind side which is that we can be lazy and just rely on say like mainstream medias and other things for information without doing research so you mm. end up only believing and trusting in one story but to me, I always think there's three sides of a story. There's side A, who thinks that way, side B, who thinks that way, and the th side C, which is the truth, which is somewhere, I think, in the middle. And that's all I'm yeah. trying to get to is the truth. Yeah. And that's so, my uh, thought process. When like, COVID hit, how did you cope with that? Like when you're, you're, a, you're a jazz saxophone player in Oslo and mm -hmm. well, you can't play anymore. What, what, how, What's like the? Do you have any uh, crazy stories from last mm. year where, where you had to how you you know how you um, mm. how you managed to deal with the situation? Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, at first when this situation came to the media and was pushing itself onto people, like everybody at very very first, I was like, <gasps> I'm in shock. Oh no, <clears throat> the world's ending. You know, and then I just started thinking more for myself and then dropped the fear. And then all of a sudden, everything was fine. Once I got rid of the fear, absolutely fine. Completely no issue there. And yeah. that kind of translated and dragged into my music as well. 
so I started writing yeah. some stuff. So I thought, thought to myself, well, the gigs have dried up because events are now stopped. But we had the occasional outside event, which was fantastic. I mean, you were part of them, some of them, you know, down. The jams, yeah, like the, yeah, we should, yeah, like we, should small... show, we should show some video of it, of the concert. Yeah. Play, but the technology yeah, is not up to date yet, so. Yeah, it's okay. We can shoot and find something terrible of me uh, playing. <laughs> you can check out so, you can check out Ian on uh, Instagram and Facebook, and you will find uh, videos mm -hmm. and YouTube, especially YouTube. I think you have. Yeah. Great. You, um, or you have all the. If people want to mm -hmm. know who you are, you can you can uh, go on YouTube. And yeah, what just should, take what, money. Should, what should they What should they search for to find you? Well, like I said, just type my name in Google. I mean, it's. I'm sure you'll be writing something with my name on. And then we can just maybe add a link later. I mean, right. the stuff I put out there is just stuff. I use it as a musical notepad. Just I feel like playing at the time. I'll record it. If it sounds terrible, I don't care. It's just right. honest and pure and just having fun with music. Make music fun again. That's what I say. Perfect. <laughs> Music's not so, sport. It's not competition. It's just to be enjoyed. Yeah. Do you want to talk so, about how we met? Or do you remember, like, I think it was at the yeah. uh, body of the a record store it was it was a dear friend of mine who bless her she owned this record place called barrias which had a lovely little cafe upstairs and instruments piano drums everything and i remember coming to oslo it was october the first like i said in 2011 and right. within a day or so i was going to barrias because it was one of the places i researched and me and Bodil just hit it off instantly. We just, yeah. <laughs> she made me smile and I just thought, wow, she's such a welcoming person, you know? So I was yeah. hooked to that place. It's but it was so sad to see it close, but that's a later story. Yeah. But um, through this situation that we're having in the global situation. Yes. But I met Auden who was working there and it was just like, yeah, cool, man. We got talking and then, let's maybe meet at a jam session or something and then we did occasionally but then one that stuck out to me was when my band was playing at um Mulder Jazz Festival yeah. and our band was, was very a, friendly yeah you realize that I was a piano player so you you, you were talking yeah. about me joining the band and some, some I letter. was and that was yeah, a while ago, because we were going through some small changes, but that, that right. was all resolved. But then it was at Molly Jazz. Um, what happened was our band and another band who I'm not going to say the name because they're quite a well-known well world band. We were very friendly. We were hanging out all the time. We were at Oslo, uh, sorry, Molde Jazz Festival. Right. And because these people were famous, we used that to organize a jam session at Mulder Jazz Festival. So they opened this one place because myself yeah. and um, a couple of the guys from this band went and said, look, there's nowhere to jam. There's any way we can fix a jam session tonight or tomorrow. And they went, well, and then they realized who we were all the musicians and who this band were. And they went, oh, oh yeah, let's try and do that. So they opened up this one venue specifically for us on the night time to have a yeah. jam session. You know? We thought, wow, it's going to be pretty quiet. It was packed. It was right. absolutely packed. Remember that night? Yeah. Uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the Molde? Yeah. Upstairs in this. Upstairs, yeah. I played with, the, uh, I think there was the bass, no, the drummer uh, to Stanley Clark. Yeah, that's right. That's, it was just when we were into that jam session. Yeah. yeah. And it was so, the, mm. the, the, the vibe was so high because, and mm -hmm. uh, he's Stanley Clark is a really famous uh, bass player in the jazz community. Yeah. That's right. Uh, well, our bands were hanging out. That's why we'd been yeah. hanging out all day that day and then the day before and the next. And we said, let's yeah. arrange something, you know. So we'd yeah. been at, we met up on the lunchtime, then we hung out on the nighttime and everything. We were together all day, our two bands. And because of that, we got this great connection and we said, to this venue wouldn't it be great to have a jam session somewhere and they said right. oh that's a good idea so then they put it together for us 
thinking that it was only just going to be a few of us. And because word got round who the band was, oh, right. this is a famous band, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. These guys are coming along. And next thing yeah. you know, it was packed. I remember yeah. it was packed and we were like, wow, what an yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. And I remember we'd go and played a few things. Yeah. And that's where you stuck into my mind the most because I thought, wow, this, I remembered, I thought, I yeah. know this guy. Is this the same guy from Barry Yaz? I remember. Then I, I yeah. looked and I heard you and I was like, wow, yeah. I'm really digging what he's playing. Right. I really dug Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. And Sharik was, was great on drums, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. And uh, yeah, yeah man, it feels so strange now because uh, that mm. was so normal to have like, uh, uh, or uh, that was the mm. funnest thing to have like the, the biggest uh, room with a lot of people and just like uh, boiling, <laughs> uh, you know, like the fire on the stage and so many people. Uh, yeah, so it was such a great vibe. And then now mm. it seems so, uh, it seems like a past life almost. It's so, yeah, so but sadly, because of this situation, I like to call it, it is just a past life at the minute. But I hope, and I'm fighting for it to be a normal life, because this is a normal life, that we all connect, we all mix together, we all play together, because that's what's missing. The sense right. of community, the sense of people getting together, the sense of people interacting, musicians working together. Stop being scared, just make music, you know? Yeah. That's so, what I, I think. think. Yeah, I think it's, so, uh, it's always difficult to, when you... Yeah. I don't know. You always like, yeah, you know, it's, it's it's important to just stop for a while sometimes. Mm -hmm. When like you you Ian, you're such an active saxophone player, and you you if it, if yeah. it's a jam session, you are there, and if it's music, you are there, and if it's people with the jazz interest, you want to hang out, and you are so eager to play, and mm -hmm. and so that's uh, I I know mm -hmm. it's so different, and uh, when you, when you can't just like go on and hit all for me as well, I I. I love jam sessions. It's so much fun. And uh, but of course, if you do jam sessions uh, and not and not practicing and recordings and uh, and uh, like the fundamental stuff, you can lose sense of what's like the the ground, like how to like really just like make music, you know. And definitely, I mean, half of the time, the jam stable, sessions you know? for me. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I would find half of the time for most musicians like myself and you the jam right. sessions were just a way of putting out in the public of what we've been practicing you know and then like trying new feathers out you know what i'm saying as i like to say i've got these new wings i want to try and play with you know and then right. of course you do have a slight element of competition but that's in your own head so then once you get rid of that competition mentality and you just enjoy making the music it's so great right. and so freeing and i actually went through a stage for about six months to be honest where right. i just would go to a jam session i'd take my sax and then i'd get there and i go oh, i don't want to play and it was so yeah. weird i had this mental block i just wasn't i'm not a scared person you know that you know how right straightforward i am i'm not i don't live in fear yeah. you know on any I level remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then i went through about six months where i was not scared to go on stage, that's the wrong words. I just thought, well, I, I just don't want to, I can't be bothered, I'm not inspired. And I would get to yeah. jam sessions and sometimes after 20 minutes, I would just pick up my sax in its case and just leave. Cause I was like, no, I'm not feeling the vibe. I'm just not feeling it. But I, right. I guess that was something inside myself, you know? Mm. And then, uh, so I thought, how do I redirect this musical Mm. creativity that I have which is inside here you know and inside here so I just started writing stuff and then now yeah. I've written loads of, loads of tunes which are the band once we get back together properly outside of these situation we're going to record you know we'll put an right. album together and it's yeah. going to be most probably all my own compositions so this wow. is a, a spin mm -hmm. nice yeah so uh, I have another question because uh, for me you are uh, like a, you are a, you're such a, a 
great part of the jam community in Oslo. You know, I like that's how. Or you're you're sure. I'm sure we together and have our moments. You know, it's funny. <laughs> right. You just love to play, and and yeah. I think I want to ask you what you think about the the jam community in uh, Oslo and the different uh, jams, and what 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 are good things and bad things you think about how how that how does that work before it closed down. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's a great question. A great, like two or three part questions. I mean, because I've been so integrated into all the levels of jam, be it sort of like a, yeah. um, Sunday night at Queens or Sunday night at Hanilson. Right. Them two examples for a, um, as a comparison. I mean, I'm not comparing the musical levels because it's not about that. Mm. The mentality of approaching a jam session at say a Nilsson was like go there quite chilled out more serious more focused than the playing and then more aware and using the ears zoned in queens was just like okay how many beers can we throw down the neck and let's make a noise you know and let's right, make it right. as loud as possible so yeah. that was about not caring and Hanilson was about caring right. and it was strange i mean but then it's so uh, different. All the jams were so different, and the, so the vibes. Different. And, uh, yeah. And then you got Tuesdays at Josefina's, which was more shoulders down, more like cabaret, in my opinion. Right. It's more about a cabaret thing and get up, and it was that sort of vibe, and that was so sweet. I mean, it had elements of cheesiness, but that's okay. A little bit cheesy is okay. I mean, yeah. people say, "Oh, that's cheesy," and I say, "Well, so what?" And right. who cares? What's wrong with that? Some people like right. cheese. I don't like cheese, but you know, some people do. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's about um, excuse me, <clears throat> interpretation. Yeah. I would look at uh, also say stop pressing on the Monday. I yeah. always looked at it as like uh, like more of a guitarist's jam session. Yeah, you know, it was geared for yeah, that sort of thing. really high level. Uh, of like yeah. pop really um good yeah. quality of like say popular music level you know mm. but you couldn't put the musicians because the musicians hell had like <clears throat> excuse me i've just been eating some uh, falafels and half of it went down the wrong way <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i'll try not to choke on the podcast so anyway so the, just, uh, uh, that would make the ratings go up <laughs> sax right. player chokes and falafel um no. So what happened was, <laughs> was the, the musicians, for example, let's say Stop Pressing or Queens, you could never put them in, most of them, in a Hanilson jam session right. because of the style of music. And mostly the other way around with the musicians at Hanilson, if you took them to Queens, they would think, what the heck's this, you know? Mm. But it, it's all about the different mentalities of musicians, I found. One night you have to be like uh, uh, Bob Dylan. Next right. minute you have to think about John Coltrane. Then you have to think about uh, Barry White. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it covered the musical spectrum. So that's what I liked about the jam sessions. I yeah. would take elements of each one yeah. and tap the guilty pleasures of each one. Right. I like a bit cheesy stuff now and again. I love the yeah. jazz stuff. I like a bit a mix of everything. And same with Café Sir, that had a mix of everything, you know? Yeah. So Café Sir. They, the house band on Café Sir is so, so amazing. Drummer, what's his yeah. drummer's name? Café Sir, the jam. Um, um, Oba. With the afro. Is it Oba? Yeah, Oba. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice drummer. Oh, oh. Yeah, and always making the best vibe. Mm. And oh, Yeah, positive. So, yeah, and he's so great drummer as well. Mm-hmm. Solid yeah. drummer and also a pretty handy keyboard player as well. Yeah. Which was yeah, a little and, known. Uh, I always felt so welcome there and and, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I miss it. I miss it a lot. So it's yeah, you know. Uh there's so many different thoughts about uh, all uh, like the jam sessions in the music community in general, but I, of course because there's so much alcohol and you know and Yeah, well I stopped all that alcohol stuff last June or July yeah. now. Right. Not one drop since June or July, which is feels great. The fitness thing. Yeah. 
I think that's the best thing to come out of 2020 was just taking a positive thing on life and saying, you know what it is? I'm going to get fit again. Yeah. And it worked. So that's what I'm yeah. taking the positive thing on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not even one beer. And I was known for being a party boy, let's just say. I mean, that's right. an understatement. Yeah. yeah. And, so, uh, yeah, that's great. So now, uh, so, now, so you're kind of, uh, you're actually uh, uh, going to release uh, uh, a record and it's going to be your music or what, what's the plan there? The plan is, obviously, with the, the boys in the band, the guys, great bunch of guys, to be honest. I'm so lucky to be around these guys. They're so lovely. They're solid, solid human beings, you know. And yeah. we, say, we say have this thing that we don't say we're the best musicians in the world, nowhere near, but we have the best time, you know. And it's not about being fantastic musicians. It's just about having a fantastic time. And yeah. that's what I want to do. In the album is to put forward some uh, tunes that I've written and it's obviously jazz based and just put it out there and just enjoy yeah. and that's all we want to do I mean I've written a lot of any, tunes and are you, have, have you any dates that you're gonna release or is it, have you any like no there's no release date as yet we still gotta we have a studio that's not a problem it's just a case of getting everybody together because we all have different varying thought processes on this current global situation. I'm right. more relaxed and don't live in fear, but maybe somebody else is a bit more stand away about things, you know? Right. That's this climate that we've been pushed into, you know? Yeah. And I don't, we'll live in that climate. So once we find a happy medium where everything cools down a bit, then we can all get together and say, right, let's record. Yeah. So that was the idea there. So it's on That's hold at the minute, but it's definitely planned. So, right, 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 right. And we've already been practicing a few of the tunes already. So yeah, nice, nice. That's good. Mm -hmm. I have, so I have anyway, some. Uh, what? I was going to ask you. When are you going to record something? Yeah, I actually mm -hmm. I'm uh, <laughs> currently planning. I I went to the studio uh, last week, Friday or some wow. Saturday. And I talked to a producer I I, uh, I I knew from ten years ago, and uh, wow. we just talked. We had a coffee, and I was talking about I wanted to make uh, I want to make more music, mm -hmm. and uh, but I I I really want the process to be safe, and uh, I I really don't want to rush into it. You know, like no 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 no. Before like earlier releases, I was just like I wanted to. Like I wanted to be crazy. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be all over mm -hmm. the world. So, of course, uh, I kind of want to go the other way this time and and use more time, time as mm -hmm. an aspect and make like one song and wait two weeks and, yeah. and maybe work in the studio if I get the money to do it. And I, but you know that's really difficult. So a little thing I heard was years ago, which I stick to now, is patience pays. Yeah, you know. Right, Definitely. and if it, if that's what you want, you 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 that that pays off probably, you know. Definitely, it's like slow but, uh, and steady. Yeah. So, but <laughs> you have have you any like idea if it's gonna open up again, or, or do you think it's gonna stay like this for a while, or what do you think? My, how do I put this without putting it in a strange way? My thought processes are that this is not going to change this global situation for a long time. I already know that there's proposals. It was out, you can actually check on the outside media um, that mm. the plans are to be closed at least till the end of this year. And then the, yeah. I think the government are pushing to have this emergency state till at least July, of 2022 mm. from what I and now it's been, a new lockdown situation in uh, Oslo it's terrible of course it is but you know I think what we have is people living on maths and not actually looking at people if they're breathing and oh you've got this thing in your system in your body are you sick no okay you're a case 
you know, and it's like, okay, there's a seems to be a pandemic of cases. And I say, well, how many of these cases, quote unquote, are sick or not sick or maybe a little bit sick? Is anybody falling down on the street dead? No. Nope. Okay. I think there seems to be a little bit of overkill, like, oh, quick, get off the streets, run away, live in fear in case you hurt 85 year old granny, you know? And in that case, that's, I understand that. I understand people thinking a bit like that when you're only fed one side of a story. But I also think that it's ridiculously, it's ridiculous that, sorry, ridiculously, ridiculously stupid for me, yeah. my personal feelings, if I'm going to follow that and live in fear. So I just suggest to other people, don't live in fear. That's it. Yeah. Live safe, That's not perfect. scared. Yeah. I love that about you, man. You 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 have you have like a nonstop positive energy, and it makes me <laughs> make me laugh all the time when we're playing gigs and we 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 play like two Christmas crazy Christmas stuff gigs and Easter. I won't and, remind uh, you. About, uh, I'm not going to say exactly what was said, but I won't remind you about when yeah, we did the army. Gig. We have, we talked about this before. <laughs> uh, we went on this tune that we this could turn into a lot of more uh, bad jokes and we're, we don't want to do that we I, I i want this to be more like serious and yeah. i want this to be something i i work with you know? and i want to be like a host and i want to make it like a regular thing and that's why i'll not talk in a way which could be classed as like say pub language or right. you know a potty level you know, yeah. Wash yeah. your potty mouth, you know, <laughs> right. because <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to bring up certain subjects because, of course, but people have private lives, you know, and we have to respect that. And this is a neutral thing that we're yeah. doing here. In yeah. Informative rather than abusive or I mean, we can abuse each other and take take the mick out of each other as friends. You know, that's fine. And that's a good laugh. But. Some people might take it the wrong way, some of our jokes, you know, because <laughs> they can be a bit close to the edge. What do we and usually over. say when, if you play something good and or we get a good gig, what, what do we usually say? Like, what's, what's the thing it. we say at the end of every, like, Nailed it. what? <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it, yeah. Nailed it. And everyone's just like, that's so stupid. They're, they're so stupid and it's not funny it at jokes. all, but for us, it's super funny. It's inside jokes. I mean, yeah, I mean, but the same people might laugh about something else and so we'll go, that's boring. Or well, we don't get it, you know? It's All different. Right. I mean, so I look at it this way. Some people like tea, some people like coffee. It's different right. tastes. If you like one, doesn't mean the other one's wrong, you know? Right. Of course, like, I remember one, <laughs> one situation. Do you know when it wasn't the last army thing that we did? It was the one around Easter time. Yeah. Remember? And I'm not yeah. going to mention the location. I'm not going to mention anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I, was, <clears throat> I remember I walked in, and it yeah. was, for example, um, a place where you wouldn't really expect a certain language to come out of somebody's mouth. <laughs> the first so, thing you said when you went <clears throat> into the church. So the first thing I said when I went in was the a certain swear word very very loud at the top of my voice shouted it because it was like i was excited to see somebody and i right. shouted this big bad word and it was like oh i couldn't stop laughing i couldn't stop yeah. laughing because i wasn't prepared <laughs> and the uh, you know the reverb in the church it made it just like sound like a you just gave it away that was a church <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay but we're not going to say where or what it was but it was okay, so let's... let's I think you're the greatest church. icebreaker in the music is music history. You just break the ice so fast, dude. Break the ice? I think shattered it. I think we... I think we it single-handedly smashed the polar ice caps, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, we are responsible for global warming and smashing the ice caps and water levels rising. Because I walked in a church and seen a colleague of mine and hadn't seen her for a while and I said this big swear word as loud as you can in a big reverbing church and I was like oh. yeah crazy. not cool but then because I'd realized I'd swore and it came out like that and she says Ian you've just said 
a bad word and I said it again because I was like, oh, bleep. Did I say that? Oh, bleep. <laughs> you know, and it was like, right. no, no, no. Double head plant. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that it, it made me, it made me, it made me go from, it made me go from this to like, ah, oh, I can yeah. now relax, you know. It's, it's... <laughs> I like it. Okay. I remember when we were idea. practicing the tunes, when when we were yeah. practicing our things, you know, and uh, yeah. we would deliberately start that expression nailed it because we would deliberately play out of tune and deliberately yeah. play out of time and stuff to say, yeah, <laughs> say yeah, imagine yeah, yeah, yeah. right on the video now, <laughs> and it was crazy. really really. And we close our eyes and like like nodding. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And we're going hang, 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 pong, ping, ping, plonk on the piano. Deliberately we always as bad as we could going, yeah, yeah. nailed it. Nailed mm -hmm. it. Every time we played something wrong, you were just like to me, and I, I felt like we had a connection, and it was just like <laughs> and it sounds so terrible in it. <laughs> this pump <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> and that's where that came from. <laughs> oh my god yeah that's the where it started Oof. oh that's so funny dude and then and to people and listening and out there singer yeah to, yeah to people listening out there it might not so, sound funny now this story but when you're there and you just swore as loud as you can in a church and then you're right. playing the wrong notes deliberately it's and crazy. then got this dynamic of it being a really serious army gig and it's right. like and it's going to go around the world. That's this gig was broadcast around the world to all the Norwegian military personnel. And we had that pressure of that. And then the first thing we did is we swore in a church and played wrong notes. Right. <laughs> no pressure at all. I mean, it was like, okay, there's no pressure there at all, you know? <laughs> and the whole thing was like, recorded what? on the cell phone. Mm. I think all the swearing, yeah. we, we cut that out. I think that didn't, you know, didn't, yeah. didn't put that in. You know, <laughs> should have left it in because that's really human. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine it now. I'm uh, not going to swear, but can you imagine it now? The first thing comes up in the title, bleep. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh oh. I, no, I will, no, I will no. name this video like episode one, Ian Travella. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never bleep. like <laughs> beep. <laughs> yeah, bleep. No, you should name this podcast Ian Hates Churches. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, that's terrible. No, of course I don't hate churches. But you see, put um the musician versus the church or something. No, I don't know. Let's think what we can call this one. This one could be um nailed it. There you go. Nailed it. Nailed it. Episode, episode one nailed it. Perfect, Ian. I think that's great. Ta -da! You see, Nailed you can it. always count on me and you to put our heads together and yeah, find a solution. Thank you so much. Dude. I, I think I'm gonna. I want to ask uh, Celia and uh, and uh, mm. some of the more of the, uh, and some other musicians, and I will keep yeah. this thing going, and I will try to keep like this podcast thing going. And right, can I ask yeah, you a I'm question gonna... though? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's it like being the second best looking out of me and you? <laughs> feels, feels there like we go. Tis, yeah. does it, do you feel cheap? <laughs> you feel cheap and used. <laughs> yeah, it feels, it feels uh, special. Bad. Yeah, I feel, Good. I feel, I love, I love this one. You know, you nailed Good. it. Good, punish yourself. <laughs> punish yourself. <laughs> this is our normal conversations yeah. people out there watching this this is how our conversations go and they yeah. go more random and more stupid and more and out there nobody's right. drinking alcohol nobody's doing anything horrible or substances we're just naturally stupid when we meet up so right. to you out there where is it there's the phone Ooh. to you yeah, people yeah. out there yeah. who who think who that or, or listen yeah who are watching this or think that what the heck's going on here this is just a normal thing for us this is just normally how we get on you know what i mean we're like two puppies <laughs> yeah <laughs> we are definitely like two puppies you know when you get two puppies that get excited and they start peeing everywhere that's us yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely us <laughs> yeah oh my okay. god I'm on that good, bombshell what? 
on that bombshell. I'll love on you, that leave bombshell. you with that. Nailed but, it, yeah, man, I think. Pleasure. But definitely, I should ask you one question, though, man. Yeah. And not the silly like one, but yeah. <laughs> I'll try and be serious a little bit because you know yeah. we're heading down stupid direction as we always do. Yeah. Like, when are you going to be playing back in Oslo anytime? Are you going to come down and have a jam here with me sometime? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't have any like active bands right now because I started school in Lillehammer uh, this fall and I kind of like yeah. escaped Oslo, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't do that because. Uh, I, I really miss playing bands and I want to, I want to like, you know, I yeah. want to, I really want to just, uh, you know, uh, start, start fresh. And like I said, like slowly, and I don't yeah. want to rush into anything. So, no. and I, I don't have any plan. I don't have, I have no plans like coming up, like, uh, like uh, mm-hmm. in a close time. I, I want to go to concerts. I want to watch, you know, there's going to be some mm-hmm. concerts in Oslo now uh, after this this lockdown, and it's going. I want to just go there as an audience, and I want to check it out, and yeah. I don't want to be in the background, you know, because uh, <laughs> before COVID, I was just thrown into the whole the ball of musicians just playing in Oslo, yeah. and I just had to like swim out, you know. Yeah, of course. And, I, and now I want to I want to get back, but I just want to I want to watch it, and I want to. I don't. I don't necessarily have to be like a this, like a like a like a part of it, you know, like a no. stage. I just want to. I want to hang out, talk to you guys, and I want to observe from afar and enjoy. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's good yeah. to touch because you get the perspective of like, well, because for example, you're going to take a step back and watch a bit more, because then you can have more selective thoughts and think, well, you know, I'm not really. I was going to these jam sessions there and I was joining in that. Why was I doing it? I'm not actually enjoying it, you know? Maybe that's what you're going through now where you're thinking, you know, I'll be more selective with what you play on, you know? And that's right. okay. It shows yeah. musical maturity. Yeah. Because we all just want to make a noise. That's the thing. But now it's I want it's to come to your concert. I want to see, I want to be in your mm-hmm. audience. Check you Absolutely. out. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I mean, we have had some concerts, you know, and then of course, the situation and we were booked in for jazz festival at Kongsberg and whatnot, you know, yeah. so they got canceled, but the next time was a gig for sure. You're there. I'll drag you in. You, you can get up on stage with us, you know, and have a laugh. All right. It's not a problem. It's very shoulders down when we do gigs. It's, I always say when there's no egos allowed, it's just smiles. That's all. Smiles. Yeah. <laughs> like we do, we just have a laugh, you know, that's yeah. all it's about, you know? Yeah. So. And it, and it and we be and and it makes you know when we started playing it was we didn't know like how the music is gonna be when we play together, but now when we meet up we're so like you know yeah, locked in. Yeah, we're locked in and we trust each other and it, it's so easy to make things flow and yeah. And all the laughter and the humor in the beginning made us <laughs> just like <laughs> have fun. Yeah, and it, you know, it's so easy to to yeah. just like hang out and yeah. play music together. So, Well, when you mentioned this podcast thing to me, I was like thinking to myself, yeah, great. Then all of a sudden instantly I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> we're going to laugh. <laughs> we're going to be stupid. We're going to be like two and puppies I, again. And my, my biggest fear now is all the response. I think people, like all the comments are going to be like, oh, they're so, they're, that's the biggest loser in Norway or something. And I don't know, it's going to, how well, it's going to play out. That's their problem yeah, but that's their problem. If people, you know, I put out to, I say to people like that, if people want to just write negative stuff, don't bother writing it at all. I always think right. positive vibes only. Think of solutions and not problems. Think yeah. positive, don't think negative. You can be identifying with the negative, but don't focus on it. If somebody wants to write a negative comment about me and you talking, having a laugh and sharing musical experiences and thought processes, if they want to find something negative in that, I can't see that's a person I want to be around. So that person right. means nothing to me because I yeah. want to surround myself with positive people who are in the musical world and let them have yeah. their negative in- their thing and let them sit in the guitar or their yeah. piano or their sax or whatever in their bedrooms and play to nobody because that's the sort of person I put with a negative mentality because nobody right. wants to be around that. 
So they'll be right. very lonely musicians. Great. Let them be lonely and let them yeah. be nasty. But that's their problem. I don't care. I'm going to wear a smile yeah. and enjoy yeah. music and enjoy talking stupid with right. you. <laughs> we had a good time. We had a good time. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Is, is that enough? Is it not enough? Who knows? And, and to all the people in the comments, I want them to write the word nailed it. Them words. <laughs> yes. they've, got, they've got to try and write the words nailed it. If you Somewhere. got to this point of the video, right now. Yeah. Yeah. If they haven't fell asleep. <laughs> Wakey wakey oh. if you have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, man, it's been fantastic. And then uh, yeah. You're the first I will guest. see you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. this when you're putting it out. And I think the, in like 30 episodes, probably, you know, it's going to be John Mayer on here or something. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, be a no, huge no. Star. I oh. no. I think by by the time you do your thirtieth one, it'll be at least. Um, I'm thinking it might be somebody like. Uh, hmm. Let's think. I think who would really. <laughs> you know, I'm going with this now. Of course, I think it might be good if you interview yourself, on your thirtieth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You should go, Auden, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Then you turn and go, yes, and no, yeah. and Auden, and Auden, and yes, Auden, me, and me. <laughs> I think you should do that. Or, interview or like yourself. Have a Zoom with my face, with different hats, and like I would interview yeah. myself. And tell you what would be even more confusing, is if like you asked yourself a question and you didn't know the answer to it. Right. <laughs> that would be really confusing. So do you have a question yeah. you want me to ask you? In the end, now. Yes. Okay. How about this? I'll ask you a question on this. Not uh, we've talked too much about my thought processes, and it's not just about that, you know. And it's about right. I want to ask, what made you feel like you want to start doing podcasts? Was it through boredom? Was it just through like yeah. an alternative way to tap into people's brains and music, or was it just some other yeah. answer? No, um, I've been just watching. Just to show your nice hat. What? <laughs> just to show your nice hat. Yeah, this epic <laughs> hat. You know, that's all. That's the whole episode about epic hat. You know, epic hat. No, so, no, but it's uh, it's uh, because I I I watched this podcast with Alan Stone. It's called Live mm -hmm. at the Lodge, and, mm -hmm. and he started it when COVID hit. And he's a oh, musician, yeah. and he's doing what we're doing here. And uh, but he. Nice. Uh, He does Zoom, but uh, and and also he has guests in the studio. And ah. but when he started out, it was kind of like this. And now, you know, my dream is to make it like a, if I have a studio and I will have uh, I will have the guests beside me. And uh, yeah, because I know a lot of musicians, and I, I know people have a lot of have a lot of stories and what they want. Mm -hmm. And I want this to be like medium where yeah. they can talk about it. So. Of course, and there's much more where this came from with me and you. Definitely, there's lots of more stories there. Yeah, you. you anyway, I, I have yeah. to try this. I want to try this while I'm here. It's random, but I'm going to try and stroke your face. I'm stroking <laughs> your face. <laughs> stroke the Auden. <laughs> right. We must have a stupid podcast. I mean, we had a, a daft one now, which is fun. But it, yeah. we must have one where it's a bit more focus on how me and you are when we get together, which is just. For everybody out there, we have this thing called random stupidity. Yeah, and that's how it works. Yes, it's it's it's, uh, it's, it's not really Norwegian vibes. It's kind of like British. I think the humor between yeah, the two of us is really British. You know, a bit more Monty Python st style. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a question for you, Alan. Here's a, here's a good one. So right. your You've got how many keyboards do you have? First of all, actually, I had to sell one of my stereo keyboards during COVID. Ah. But uh, I have probably, I have, uh, I have five, four or five. I don't know. Which one's your favorite? The one I sold, I think. Yeah, it's a Fender Rhodes Mark II. Uh, you know, in the studio, when, you know, you, you mm -hmm. tried it in my studio. Yeah, I like. I mean, I had to no, no, that's sad. Oh, you see, uh, this is the thing. 
us musicians, the creative souls out there, the ones who are suffering also, because we don't have any work, most of us, from this. I mean, I'm in a lucky position that I do have other work with my music and things. And but there's a lot of people out there who don't, and I, I feel for them so bad because it's people are losing instruments, people are losing not just the instruments, I mean, that's stuff, but it's the creative side where yeah. they've lost, like, you've lost this keyboard, which is dear to you, it's your thing, you, you love it, and it gives you a certain yeah. way of thinking when you play. And to lose yeah. that because you have to make some money to pay rent or whatever, it's just horrible. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's terrible. I think your your face froze, I think. Oh, I think we lost Ian here now. Okay, I'm going to pause this. Three. Great. Yeah, you froze, so, Ian, but uh, I think yeah, you're back Yeah, I froze that. I was like, So all the people yep. in internet land will see. I think you froze like this. <laughs> it was like, Ooh, excellent. Yeah. So, and now but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No. But now you, you froze. froze again. Yeah, you froze. You're freezing all the time now. Yeah, you froze. Yeah, yeah. same. And it's weird because I'm on a strong okay. internet network. So. Okay, just hurry up yeah, and anyway. uh, wrap it up. All right. Okay. So, but anyway, it's just it's sad that you had to sell your keyboard and because that's part yeah. of your creativity that you've lost. I think this yeah. whole global situation is so horrible for many many people but they keep forgetting about us creative people like the musicians yeah. think about this you people out there who are in your lockdowns or your quarantines or whatever yeah. what are you going to do when there's no music and there's no television think about the people who make that and that's us people yeah you know people don't think that's about what, that they take it for granted that's what I that, think, i'm that's not what, meaning bad for them right it's so good that um, you know you know Tix, the famous Norwegian pop star. Tix. No. He was on a debate no. on the on the TV the other day, uh, and it was like right. the first real debate about how musicians are dealing with this, and it really raised the questions. And and there's also uh -huh. been like this uh, where a lot of musicians signed this uh, letter to the culture cultural mm -hmm. minister. I was a part of that uh, document. Where we talk about mm. this stuff and how difficult it is for, especially as young, you know, as young yeah. musicians who are just uh, finishing the study, to the studying music, and yeah, to go and do nothing, you know, I mean, it's right. just horrible for. Them. Yeah, I feel so sad for difficult. people. Mm -hmm. Right. The thing is, I don't mean bad when I say, "Hey, you people out there, think about musicians." I mean it like, "Hey, have a thought yeah. for us musicians that who are." We're the ones who've provided entertainment for all your lives, musicians, actors, because yeah. you know, I'm so involved important. in that side as well. It's so important. Yeah. Things that you take for granted when you go, oh, well, I'm in my lockdown. I'll just watch something on TV. I'll just put my headphones on, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, who do you think provides all that, you know? That's us lot. Right. You know? They don't yeah. take that for, wow, that's a product. That's, that's somebody's behind that. That's a life. Somebody puts their, heart and soul into things you know right <laughs> you know that's perfect so is there anything you want, do you want to give a shout out or anything you want to say in the end or? no I just say stay safe not scared perfect. wear a smile because it's free if you don't wear a smile it's expensive and listen to music do you have mm -hmm. any music suggestions what, what should people listen to um I would say listen to Japanese nose flute. <laughs> Perfect. No. Nailed it. No. Nailed it. Nailed it. No. Listen to anything that makes you smile, anything that makes you shuffle around in your seat, anything that right. makes you feel emotional, anything that makes you feel good or bad. It doesn't matter. Any music is valid music. It's just yep. music. It's all frequency. I don't yep. have a certain suggestion. I just think listen to what makes you feel good. Yeah, that's simple. I think we end there, Ian. I think that's a better note so, to end. Anyway, on. yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, because yeah, I'm getting a bit bored of you now. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting bored. <laughs> I, want you to play, I want you to play the jingle to this podcast. It's going to be like some fucking crazy jingle, I think. I don't know. We have to do like the, 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 the what was it called? The lick, ba ba do da yeah, do da <laughs> Yeah. I'm doing, I'm doing live with musicians from Norway. Yeah. It's like, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> that could be the jingle <laughs> yeah perfect oh my god all right perfect you take i'll care. see you soon Ian. take care and i'll uh, have to have a trip up to lillehammer yeah. sometime yes you know but lillehammer is it, it's safe lillehammer is pretty safe now it's good of course well where would i stay is there a space at your place or do i have to well, get a hotel, hotel? You're, you're going to be a hobo if you come to lillehammer probably if you're in uh, no. You That's can stay okay. in my place. I'll get, I'll of course, shoes. you can. Stay, you just, I'm joking. Of course, you yeah. can stay in my place. Yeah. Well, I'll have to do that definitely. We'll have if a laugh. I'll bring if you want. Tenor. I'm just a kid, 100%. you know. Just, what? I don't care. I'll bring my tenor yeah. and have a jam, you know. Right. Perfect. Yeah, man. Right. I'll see you yeah. soon, man. Take care. See you soon. Peace out. Bye. Bye.